Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Clearly you can see by the intro I'm trying to upgrade my YouTube game a little bit, but I'm so excited today because I'm actually doing something a little different today. I'm doing a Notion walkthrough video where I'm actually showing you how to build something. And in this case, I am showing you how to build recurring tasks. When I first started using Notion, task management was not something that, in my opinion, Notion did very well. So I stepped away from Notion for a period of time. But since then, I've clearly returned to Notion because the recurring tasks piece and the task management is just figured out. It is so much better. I am so much better at using Notion now. And in this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to set up recurring tasks in your Notion that is integrated within the Notion system. Now, I think this is super important because I've used other, you know, third party integrations. I've used a pipe dream integration, you know, but since then I've actually had a lot of customers who I work with inside of my notion support group who really struggled with some of those old automations. And so I wanted to find a way to do it inside of notion. So I don't have to worry about the automation breaking or some sort of notion update, changing how that automation worked, but still allowing me to build recurring tasks inside of my notion task management databases. I think a huge part of your systems, you know, helping manage and mitigate your burnout is to have the ability to automate. So if we don't have the ability to do recurring tasks, that's a bit of a problem. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through not only how to build the recurring tasks, but there's also a template linked below where you can access a set up notion template where the recurring task feature is already in there. So let's go ahead and do this. Before we get started, I want to let you know that I do have a Notion template completely free that is linked in the description below this video that has already incorporated this into the agenda inside of here. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, and you can use this recurring tasks feature inside of this is already set up to do exactly that. But we're going to go ahead and build one from scratch just so we are used to exactly how to do this. So I'm going to do this inside of my templates. Um, actually I'll just go ahead and collapse this guy down. Um, so then you're just going to go ahead and you're going to click the little plus sign over here and we're going to build from here. So I'm just going to call this recurring tasks. We'll just keep it simple. Um, and I am going to do this. I am going to actually start with a table view. I like to have a table view inside of my task databases, though I do use the calendar view a lot just because I actually find adding tasks in the table view is a little bit easier. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go to new database and we are going to just go delete the guys that are already here. Now, obviously from here, you can customize it as you see fit. Um, we can't do a lot of the serif whatnot in here, serif fonts, full screen, etc. But we can add a cover if you would like. So let's make it like a cute little like desktop or something like that. This is like an oldie, but a goodie. It always looks cute. I like this video, this one. So we'll reposition that guy, add a little icon. Um, and since this is a task database, let's do like the check mark guy. Beautiful. So we can customize it to our heart's content, but let's get to actually building this planner. Your task management system does not have to be complex to be effective. It can be incredibly, incredibly simple. But to build this so that it handles recurring tasks, we're going to want to do a couple things. First and foremost, I'm going to delete this property. And I am going to create a new property that is a checkbox property. And I'm going to call this recurring question mark. This is going to become important a little bit later when we actually start setting up our recurring tasks, but that we definitely need that check mark there. We're also obviously going to want a check mark for whether or not a task is completed. So I would call that one done question mark. And I like to put this one over here just so it kind of is logical whenever I add a task in here, I can then go in and I can just check it off. Don't worry, I'll move this recurring box out of the way so we don't accidentally check it eventually. Alrighty, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do here is we are going to want a date property. I've actually seen something a lot of people are doing lately on YouTube where they call it a DO, due date, instead of a DUE, due date, so that we're focusing more on when we're gonna get it done and not when it needs to be done, which I actually like. So we're going to go ahead and put that and this is going to be helpful for any of the tasks in our system that we are actually scheduling ourselves. These are not the recurring tasks. So that's what that guy is going to be really, really important for. 
The other thing we are going to want is actually going to be a created time. This is going to become important for our um, for our recurring tasks in our database. And again, you just go plus and then scroll down to the bottom and do created time. Not created by, we want created time. So that's going to become important later as well. These created time and recurring ones are going to be really, really important for actually driving our, um, our to-do list. Alrighty, so then the last thing we want inside of here, again, this is the final piece here, really, really keeping this nice and clean and nice and simple, is we are going to create a formula. And this is actually, spoiler alert, going to serve as the date that we use to sort and that we use in our calendar. Now, the reason for that is this. When we create a recurring tasks, Notion does not have the ability to go in and change a date property in that recurring task. The only thing that the recurring task feature allows you to do is to create actually a new template. We can't actually assign that template to the date. I'm going to show you how to do the recurring tasks a little bit later, but it will not allow you to change this date. It will only change this date. That is actually why we need both. So now in this show in calendar feature, what we're going to go ahead and do here is we are going to create a formula. So you're going to get a little sneak peek into how to write formulas here. And we are going to use the if then statement in here. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what the statement means as we write it. But we're going to start with our if. And then we are going to say if prop recurring equals false. What this is saying is if the recurring box is unchecked, I want you to use the due date. So if the recurring box is not checked, use this date. And then our last part of our if statement is, if it is checked, it's kind of, this is the, if it's true, and then this last part is if it's false, um, if this statement is true versus if this statement is false. So if the recurring property is unchecked, we want to use the due date. If it is checked, we want to use the created type. So now what this does is it pulls in the created time for our recurring tasks and it pulls in the due date for our non-recurring tasks. So if we assign a date to this one, it's going to pull that date in instead. This is really, really, really handy because what it allows us to do, especially as we start to create more tasks, it allows us to have a consolidated date property that we can organize and sort by. So this is going to be our table where I would say just use this for the incomplete tasks. And how, actually what I'm going to go ahead and do to kind of jazz this up a little bit is I'm going to steal a star symbol. I really, really don't like it that all of the title names are like table. Like, thank you. I know it's a table. So we'll have this be the incomplete task. So that means we are going to want to filter by done unchecked. We only want our unchecked properties to show up here. And then what I like to do here is I like to just duplicate this view. And actually we're going to change the name to a star property and then let's do a check symbol. And looks nice, but it's nice and clean and simple. So now these are all of our completed tasks. So we're going to change our filter property just by clicking on it again to checked. So that is our checked, our unchecked view. And then this is our completed view, which is currently empty because we don't have anything in here. Now we are also going to create in here a calendar view. So for that calendar view, I am actually once again going to duplicate this view because it is already set to filter by unchecked. I only want to see the things that I haven't completed inside of our calendar. So let's duplicate this guy and I'm going to call it star calendar. And we're going to choose that calendar view. Now, you can see in here, this test property is showing up in the calendar view because the calendar view is going to naturally use your, your regular date property, not your creation date, not your show and calendar. It is going to naturally use the due date property. Now, this is something that we actually want to go in and change for this to work with our recurring tasks feature. We want to go in, click calendar, and we want to show calendar by show and calendar. Now that didn't change anything, but that's going to make a big difference when it comes to our recurring tasks. It's going to make it so our recurring tasks also show up on the calendar. So let's go ahead and let's start creating some recurring tasks. This is like the meat of this video, but I wanted you to show how to set up the main calendar so that your recurring tasks actually show up as well. 
So how you're going to create recurring tasks is we're actually going to create templates. This is a Notion feature that came out this past fall where they have repeating templates. They haven't done recurring tasks yet, but they've got this recurring templates feature and we can kind of hack it, if you will, so that it actually serves as a recurring tasks feature. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in here, you're going to create a new template. And let's say we want to call this template workout. Um, we'll go ahead and do a little workout, dude, something like that. And then if you have additional properties inside of your template, this is when you're going to want to go in and customize them. So if you want like a little emoji, you want to do that now. So now we've got our template in here. Then we click these three dots. And then you see up here, it says repeat. So that repeat, we can customize in lots of different ways. If you want to work out every single day, you're going to click the everyday one. And actually, let's go ahead and make this 3.42 p.m. so that we can see our workout guy populate in just a second. So we'll give him a second to show up. So you see, he didn't actually show up in our calendar. Now there's a reason for this, and I really wanted to demonstrate this to demonstrate how important this is. In our template, we didn't do something really, really important. You might already know what I'm getting at here, but if we go into this guy, we didn't check recurring. When we check this, again, it tells our equation down here to pull the created time as the due date time. So that is really, really important. And once we check that, Ta -da, our workout shows up there. Now, let's say we want our workout, we want to work out um, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, whatever it might be. Let's say we want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this template. But now, this time around, since we've learned, I'm going to check recurring. And I actually do recommend, once you get this set up, pull that recurring all the way up to the top because it reminds you that you really, really do need to check that for your templates. So we're gonna make that recurring now. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back here and I want to show you an alternative way to schedule. If you have a task that you want to be repeated weekly, but you want it to be repeated on certain days of the week for the following week, this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna select repeat weekly out of the list, select the days when you want it to repeat, and then once again, select the start time. Let's go ahead and do 344 now so that we can see this guy pop up. So let's give it a second. Oopsie. Oops, I actually accidentally realized I picked 344 for yesterday. So let's try this baby again. And there we go. It shows up again for that. It isn't going to show up for the subsequent days that I checked until the day that it's actually scheduled to show up. That is one of the little caveats of this, um, but that is kind of how this setup works. So if I checked for Saturday, it's not gonna show up until Saturday and so on and so forth. So one thing that is important to keep in mind here is I would definitely recommend, oops, I clicked the wrong button. I would definitely recommend when you set your creation time, I would definitely make it in the morning. It actually defaults to 12 a.m. That would be my recommendation for when you want to create your event here. So that is how the recurring task feature works in a nutshell. You can create recurring tasks by actually, let me just go back in here. You can create recurring tasks where they happen, like I already mentioned, daily. You can create them so that they happen certain days every single week. You can create them so they happen monthly. You can create them so that they happen. Uh, oh, and actually one thing I want to say in this monthly, if you have a, uh, recurring tasks that happen every two months, you just change this guy to two. If they happen every three months, you change this to three. So that would be for like quarterly actions. If they happen biannually, you'll change this to six. So that's how I have to remind myself to like set uh, biannual health appointments, so like doctor's appointments. And then obviously yearly. And then if you have things that are like every two years or every three years, you just change that number as well. The only thing I can think of I might use for that is to like on my myself to get a new driver's license or re renew my TSA pre-check or something like that. But that is how you set up your recurring tasks in here is using that feature. So the one final thing I will say is because this calendar is sorted by the show in calendar property and not the regular due date property, any view that you are looking at where you need to sort or filter your um your actions you want to do so using show in calendar so for example if on this page like maybe i wanted this to be all of my 
tasks. And maybe I wanted to create a view that was just today's task. Completely reasonable. That's actually something I have in the digital planner. What I'm going to want to do is I am going to want to filter where my show in calendar, not my due date, is on or before today. So that's the other important thing to remember that if you were going to be doing any filtering, you need to filter by the show and calendar property, not the due date property. So I hope this makes recurring tasks a little bit more accessible. The one thing, final thing I will say is if you have a bajillion recurring tasks, it does clog up your templates a little bit. I'll give you a sneak peek at mine. I do have a bajillion recurring tasks. I have a bajillion tasks in general. So once you add all of your recurring tasks in here, this is what it starts to look like. But what I like about it is it is all integrated. It is native to Notion. And it is a way to make that recurring templates feature inside of Notion actually function as a recurring task feature. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Drop them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and you want more videos like this, go ahead and like and subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you next time, my friends. Bye.